So how do you focus on your own health and well-being when there's so much suffering going on in the world? And how do you maintain that focus when someone you love is going through tough times? That's what we're going to talk about today. I firmly believe the answer is love. To love ourselves, to model loving ourselves, showing up for ourselves, and to hold space, to hold the space for grace, the space of love, is essential when people are suffering. Sometimes it's not so much in what we say, but it's how we're being. And ultimately, when people are lashing out, when they are suffering, it has nothing to do with you. <laughs> nothing. Ultimately, sometimes the reason people lash out is because they want help. They want to be seen. It's interesting because I've, I've been blessed to have some amazing experiences that on the outside don't look promising. They seem intense. They seem hurtful because hurt people hurt people. But if they allow themselves to be witnessed and they actually recognize that that's not who they want to be, it's actually a beautiful moment to wake up. So the work that I've taken on in the work that I'm doing with the nonprofit, I've experienced people in pain and it's, it's heartbreaking because you know that sometimes they say things that they really don't mean or they do things that because they want to be seen, because they want help. And sometimes, sometimes when someone says something and I know it's intended to attempt to hurt me, I hear, Father, forgive them for what they do. Father, forgive them for what they say. And usually once they realize that they can't take back what they've said, there's usually, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I'm grateful it's me because I have a way of being super resilient. But it's heartbreaking. It is. So what do you do when you need to focus on your well-being? I know today, today when I woke up, I took time for myself. It was Saturday. And I decided I was going to give myself a foot bath. Because I love baths. And unfortunately here, I don't have, I have access to a shower. Um, so one of my friends was joking that we were going to go to a Korean spa just so I could have a bath. <laughs> um, but I have a foot bath. So I am blessing myself at least once a week with a beautiful foot bath as part of my well-being rituals. And it's interesting because one of my former clients, we reach out to one another once in a while and she moved 
back to the Midwest and she's doing extremely well. But I remember, I remember when she had a relapse and I remember the awful things that were coming out of her mouth. <laughs> and I smile now because in the moment, in the moment when someone is attacking you, verbally attacking you, um, thankfully nobody has gotten physical. My girls have been pretty good. I've been really blessed. I've made really beautiful connections with the ladies in the house here that have come through this door and I've been blessed. I really have been blessed to have opportunities to share deeply, to help, help them to see themselves more clearly because sometimes all they see is the darkness. All they see is the shame. And if I can help to reignite a light within them, to let them know that they're, they're not bad, they're not stupid, that they're not diminished, that they're not Place whatever this limiting belief is that would hold you back. Body shaming. Giving yourself away until you can't recognize the person looking back at you in the mirror. Doing things that for someone who respects themselves loves themselves, would never choose because you lost that space of feeling like you were worthy or deserving of an ounce of kindness or love or searching for love and validation and approval in all the wrong places. There's a lot that I can relate to with what, what the ladies here have shared with me. And when they're suffering, I don't take anything they say to heart. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes, sometimes my nerves get a little rattled when somebody's yelling at me. And I know they're not they're not in the right space of their who they are I know that it's a shadow that's talking to me and I look them in the eye and I let them know that I see them not the them that's yelling at me but the them that is inside the light within the divinity within because that's the seed, that, <laughs> the miracle of life that we're born into is knowing that that is that source of creation inside of us. And then there's, there's also the seed of darkness. Somehow, through life's experiences, through our DNA, I, I watch a lot of research talks by doctors, by scientists, and I was watching one earlier today, and it was so interesting because she was chatting about, let's see, Dr. Tara Swartz, and she was, she was sharing about how when children are even in utero, so they're in the, the mom's belly, and they're sharing the same blood supply. And when there's like this spike of cortisol when, when a mama is going through stressful times and that, that goes into the DNA of the baby as it's being formed. A lot of, a lot of the parents of the clients here also suffer, suffer with addictions. And 
a lot of them are fighting old beliefs. You know, whether, whether they were, you know, two years old, three years old, whether they were in utero when the beliefs were formed. I know that I'm here to make a difference in our world. I know that I understand the pain and suffering of addiction, the pain and suffering of trauma, of what we go through when we're young, the abandonment, feeling like you don't matter, that you have to be a good girl or you have to suck it up and be strong and not say what you want, not be able to share your feelings. Unfortunately, look where that's got in our world. We need to shift and create healing in our world. And it all starts with, with me. And it starts with you. And it starts with us becoming true to our own hearts. To not take anything personally. That's been a huge lesson here. I am not responsible for what anyone says, does, or thinks. And I love myself so much. <laughs> I love myself so much. And I want to model that for these women because they all deserve love. But the only way that they're going to get it, they're going to find it, they're going to attract it, is to first be it. And it's what every, every girl wants. Every girl wants to be loved. She wants to know she's worthy of love. And I hope that I'm setting a good example for that. I hope that I'm, they can see even when I'm firm that I love them. And sometimes, sometimes I have to raise my voice. Sometimes you have to raise your voice. Sometimes you have to say what you're available for and what you're not available for. And people are going to make the choices that they're going to make. And it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with whatever they're going through inside of them. So today, I just want you to know that the greatest thing that you can do is love. And sometimes you do it from, <laughs> you create a little space and do it from afar. And sometimes you reach out and you let people know they matter if you've lost connection. And I believe creating space Space for love, space for grace, space for compassion, space for understanding. But never let someone abuse you, either verbally or mentally, emotionally, physically, that that's not okay. And if you're going through any of that as part of honoring you and this journey of well-being I would love for you to reach out and get some help if that's happening to you because it's not okay and that's when we get to create space because sometimes space is what's required and sometimes Sometimes when you're not in danger and it's just someone self-inflicting harm on themselves, you get to be that space of love that knows that you know that it just has nothing to do with you. That person needs to heal whatever's going on within them. And if you're a parent or a grandparent, maybe it did have something to do with you. And... Maybe you can be a resource to show up in that person's life and let them know that however that pattern got created, that you're there to help them through it and to heal it. And you get to take responsibility for whatever healing 
is required for you inside of you. I know this, this whole journey of life <laughs> has shown me that there's been a lot of healing that I've had to be open to. And I wanted these, these, especially these last talks, today's day 25 of our, our 30 day journey into well-being. And I wanted these talks to end on an upbeat note. But as I, I go through my life day to day, I'm taking what's coming through that seems important to share because I really want to connect with you and I really want you to know that you matter and your well-being matters because your well-being is your health, it is your wealth. And you are so worthy. You matter. You deserve to, to know love within yourself. And you deserve to attract it as well. So on this day 25 of our journey into well-being, I wish you well. I wish you being the most connected beautiful space of love within yourself that allows you to really begin to trust yourself, to know yourself, to honor yourself, to respect yourself so that you can create immense love all around you, attracting others into your world that are showing up for you the way that you know that you've always wanted. And if you're a woman, <laughs> it's funny because I know that part of the, the whole fairy tale of wanting someone to show up for us, to let us know that we're worthy of being loved, is part of how all of this There's a discrepancy in our world of masculine and feminine energies. And I get to see this in a, in a really interesting way that not a lot of people do. And one thing that I've come to feel inside of me is that I am, I am, I am, I am the I am that I am. <laughs> it's late, bear with me here. But when we talk about pronouns, I feel like our world is so divided because we we create so much division and separation and it's I think it's part of our suffering and if we continue to perpetuate it it just makes us more more alone more separate so that's why I, I started saying for my pronoun, me, we, because I am me, I am, I am me, and I am we, because we are all connected, we are all in this together, and until we actually realize that it's through our connection and our togetherness, in, in our we-ness, we ness <laughs> our we ness <laughs> that that's where that's where the healing happens when we own our our stuff that is ours to heal within us and i realize we're not alone like we're all going through our own healing journey and i honor you and yours and i send you so much love 
If you'd like to join me, I will be having a uh, master class coming up and we'll be talking about codependency. We'll be talking on how to remain resilient and recover yourself, no matter how that looks. You know, there's so many different areas of life that require recovery. You know, it could be grief, it could be depression, it could be addiction, it could be recovery from trauma, childhood trauma. And I know I've done a lot of work in this area with abandonment and coming back home to your heart is the greatest gift that you're ever going to give yourself. So I would love to encourage you to be on that master class, be a part of my ancestral meditation that we'll do on that master class, and know that you're worthy of showing up for you, loving yourself so deeply, and start start listening to the voices in your head, <laughs> we all have them. You know, it's so funny because it's, it's interesting because those thoughts we have, it's, it's like between 40 and 70,000 thoughts per day, I believe it is. And those thoughts are autopilot. It's a default mode that runs in your brain. And it's until you get conscious of it, until you start making conscious choice, taking actions, that you can actually go beyond all of those old stories, the limitations, the judgments, the conclusions that hold you back from the life that you really truly want. Because you can create an amazing life that you, you love to live. And I know that you can. I know that I can too. And right now, I really am loving being a part of helping this amazing nonprofit that I'm helping out. I, <laughs> if you're in the Los Angeles area, I am finishing up my training in TMS therapy, which is transcranial magnetic stimulation for depression and generalized anxiety disorder. And if you'd like to be a part of that or part of the recovery program that I am I'm currently writing or part of the Doorway to Your Divine Destiny where you access moving yourself into your resiliency and sustainable self-leadership, having self-agency over your life, make sure to reach out to me. I would love to connect with you and put some time on my calendar to visit with you. And for now, I'll say goodbye and hope you make it a magnificent day. I'm sending so much love your way. And thank you again for joining me for day 25 of our journey into well-being. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share a comment with me. Let me know what was your best takeaway from, from this little chat here today. So... From my heart to yours, we'll see you next time. Bye for now.